you hear me? I hear you, you redneck moron. <laughs> Rip out my innards, play with my eyeballs, boil my brain and eat it for brunch. See, in the end, Buffy is just the runner-up. I'm the queen. Only Cordelia could trash talk a vampire into walking away. Welcome back, super friends and super family. I am Thor, your friendly neighborhood god of thunder. Today, I'm reacting to episode five of season three of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So... The last two episodes have been incredibly strong, in my opinion. Episode three was a gigantic twist at the end and also an introduction to what I think... I don't want to get too attached to Faith before they just kill her off. You know, I'm still going to put her mentally in a category of, like, side character in case they pull a Jenny on us and just break her neck in the next couple of episodes. So I'm going to hold off on getting too attached to her character. But I was going to say it seems like she's a new member on the crew, but... Maybe not. Maybe it's just another way for Joss Whedon to kind of twist the knife in all of our hearts as viewers. Um, but episode, the last episode, I really, really liked it. it. It The themes that it dealt with were so mature and so well-developed and tied into the story in just a really cool way. I'm not going to talk about it too much since I kind of discussed a lot of my thoughts in the last reaction, but I will just say I really hope that there is a chance for Angel. For the Angel that Buffy loves and that I love as a fan of the show, I love for Buffy. You know, I'm, I'm rooting for Buffy's happiness so much. That's part of the reason I'm so sad that her therapist, you know, for two seconds got killed because A, that guy was cool, and B, I think if anyone on this planet needs therapy and could benefit from therapy, deserves, you know, to be listened to, to be guided, to be helped, it's Buffy, you know? And... It would be nice if she could have someone to talk to. And I, and I also really understand the need for someone like Buffy or just for anyone. You know, you can have friends, but as the cool therapist who is now deceased was saying, you need, you know, you can sometimes need someone to talk to besides your friends, if that makes sense, especially when you're dealing with all the trauma, the fighting, the pressure, the complexity, the stakes, just everything that is entailed with being a slayer at Buffy's age in life. I mean, so it, it would be it would be good, but as far as Angel is concerned, I don't know. I'm not too optimistic. I think that even though it seemed like there was some return of Angel, I think at the very least it's going to be a slow progression to returning to his self and there might be some memories of Buffy being the one who sent him into the demon dimension I think it's hell I'm pretty sure they called it hell but I think it was referred to as the demon dimension but whatever that dark fiery scary swirly whirl circle thing was it was not nice and I am sure that Angel has been suffering horribly so I, I just hope we don't reach a point where Angel remembers and then blames Buffy for all his suffering but we'll see We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, as always, if you want to see the full unedited reaction to this episode, all my Buffy, they're all on Patreon. Next week's reaction to episode six of season three is also out on Patreon right now for early access. Let's just get into the episode. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, season three, episode five. What's <laughs> Cordelia's face when Xander's talking about a public bus? The homecoming queen doesn't go to the dance in advance. Use your head. Well, technically, you haven't been elected yet. Okay, if Cordelia does not get elected, I will be so upset. Why wouldn't you go? You already have your tickets. I mean, unless you don't have a date. A or two to think about it. <laughs> Poor Willow. I feel like she always happens to be saying the most awkward things when people show up. Uh, sure, I do. You know, if you want to. I do if you want to. Yeah, the judges will accept that as a yes. <laughs> Oz is like, let me step in here. I think I'm going to call it a night. But I'm excited about the dance. Me too. But I have a complicated situation with my ex. How do I explain this? How do you begin to explain? <laughs> Jeez, talk about dramatic reveal. I'm assuming he's still a vampire, so what did she bring? Like some rodents for him to feed on or something? I haven't 
told Giles and the others that you're back. I think you need to. And I'm not going to. A and I'm going to keep helping you get better. It's just that everything's different now. You can say that again. A and I'm involved with someone. Oh, great. His name is Scott. Does he need to hear this now? Does he really need to hear this now? It's like you come back from hell and you need to find out that your ex-girlfriend has moved on and is dating. Do you really need that news? Someone I can count on. I don't think we should see each other anymore. What? I love that transition they did, by the way. From here on, you are going to see a drastic distraction reduction. Drastic distraction reduction. <laughs> Try saying that ten times fast. Yeah, the humor is lost on him. I'm really sorry. I mean, I actually understand him because the reality is like Buffy, if you're going to date him, I don't know how it's possible without when you hide that much of everything of who you are. Ugh, but it then, okay, who's spying? It's got to be vampires with those darkened windows, right? Twins? Is it like the FBI keeping tabs on Buffy? In the nubile flesh, my friend. That's the target. Okay, so it is vampires. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see this episode. But I, I was going to say with Scott, I feel like Buffy, there's going to be a point where she either needs to open up and tell, like, have him join the group. Kind of like they, in, they, they, you know, integrated Oz and him be in on all the, the supernatural activity, or they do need to break up. The mayor will see you now. The mayor? Well, he looks nervous before meeting him. Who's gonna play the mayor? I'm sorry to bother you, sir. I'm not bothered, Alan. Was he gonna be passive aggressive? Terrorism, uh, bombing of flight 1402. Uh, I should have brought it to you. Why is he sniffing the paper? Would you show me your hands, please? Oh, watch out, is he gonna stab his hand? I think they could be cleaner. Sir, I mean, I, I washed them, but... After every meal and under your fingernails, dirt gets trapped there. And germs. And mayonnaise. <laughs> and mayonnaise? I'd like to know if any other colorful characters have come to town. I'll take care of it. You have all my faith. I feel like he would get along with uh, Mr. Incredible's boss in The Incredibles, right? If they don't, if Cordelia doesn't win, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> Xander. <laughs> Oh, Willow. Okay, <laughs> she gets worried right before the picture. This this sums up all the characters right here. Checking out the I laughingly use the phrase competition. <laughs> you laughingly use the phrase. Open to all mankind, especially those with a letterman's jacket and a car. She could give me a run. <laughs> I love how Cordelia assesses the competition. Oh, man, guys should break up with you more often. <laughs> Bobby, Rashad, you don't phone, you don't bite. Where's the love? She's trying to get votes. <laughs> I love how absolutely transparent she is. <laughs> I had this little incident last year of getting kicked out of school. Just little. And, um, you are Buffy. Oh shoot. Buffy Summers. Oh shoot. That's oh, that's not what you want to hear. Class contemporary American heroes from Amelia Earhart to Maya Angelou. The class that changed my life. Were you absent a lot? Um... Oh, she probably was. That's so hurtful, especially with the teacher that you really connect with and love. Need for homecoming queen. I have a feeling Cordelia's gonna lose. She better not lose. I'm like a non-person. Am I invisible? Can you see me? <laughs> oh, this is just like uh, Buffy. <laughs> well, you uh, missed the picture taking. When? Why? We did him yesterday. Didn't Cordelia tell you? She got distracted. You look so cute in that outfit. I'm not voting for you. Then make it snappy. <laughs> you could have thought about somebody else for 30 seconds, that's all. Hey, I am under a lot of pressure here. Yeah, campaigning, rough gig. What would you know about it? Just because you were guacamole queen when you were three doesn't mean you understand how this works. <laughs> Guacamole queen. Now, if it was about monsters, blood, and innards, then you'd be a shoo-in. Like to see you try to win the crown. 
you would. Dang, is Buffy going to try to compete with Cordelia? I'm going to run for homecoming queen, and I'm going to win. Oh. But you have no idea who you're messing with. What, this Slayer? I'm not talking about the Slayer. You've awakened the prom queen within. <laughs> I'm kind of pumped for this competition. I'm not going to lie. Competition is a beautiful thing. It makes us accomplish. Occasionally makes us kill. Wait, is that that same cowboy vampire from the uh, that other episode? I forget which one. Bad eggs? Whatever the hell you are, my brother. You got spiny looking head things. I ain't <laughs> never seen that before. <laughs> the Mequot clan. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Point is... <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, spiny headed looking creatures <laughs> to Slayer Fest 98. I don't know this guy's name, but I kind of like him as a villain already. A boy in a band, and not just me alone in my room pretending that there's a boy in a band. Oh, Willow. <laughs> That's why I spared no expense on the tux. The tux? I thought you uh, borrowed it from your cousin Rigby. Expense to my pride, Will. <laughs> Are we on first, second, or uh, ye gods? That's none of your business. <laughs> Since when did you become a gentleman? <laughs> hmm. I was gonna go with gorgeous. Really? Okay. Remain friends, you two. I don't know if I can dance in this. I don't know if I can dance. You can dance, Willow. It's fine. I swear, if they have a moment and they, like, kiss each other, I, what is that gonna do? The love lives are already complicated enough. This shouldn't be a problem. No. No problem. Oh my gosh, they are gonna kiss, aren't they? Just fantastic. Wonderful. Just what we needed for both of your relationships. It's a close fluke, that's what it is. And there'll be no more fluking. Not ever. Oh my gosh. Right now. Oh, I didn't mean. I didn't mean either. <laughs> Speaking of big heads, if I had a watermelon as big as Cordelia's, I'd be rich. Waits for laugh. I love how Buffy has like a chart all drawn up. Hey, you're right. Making fun of the competition only makes me seem petty. I want to see all of Cordelia's insults. Fake smile. <laughs> came to my welcome home party but they were killed by zombies good point <laughs> yeah you lost those supporters they died cordelia okay look i know this is a little awkward a little hide the board with all her weaknesses we're almost friends and we are all riding together in the limo yeah great it's just about done xander i got your new flyers Let's get cracking. I love how, like, down to business Cordelia is. Like, she takes this so seriously. It's just that she needs it so much more than you do. As Willow goes, so goes my nation. But that's so sad for Buffy. It's like all her friends leave her. Buffy, I think we're getting along great, don't you? <laughs> Come on, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of rooting for Cordelia. <laughs> Imagine Buffy is so desperate she goes to Angel. She's like, I know you're mad at me. I know all this is going on, but we need to win this homecoming queen. As long as fun is still in the mix. Sure. It's not like anyone takes it that seriously. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> different, different types of competition going on. Ah, oh, covering up Cordelia's picture with an even bigger poster. I kind of like the simplicity in the design. Photo, just her sign name. I feel like Don Draper would approve. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm rooting for that villain just because he looks so ridiculous with those colors. What it's worth, you have my vote. No, I don't want you to feel... <laughs> Buffy is acting all like, oh no no, but she she was counting on getting that vote. Okay. <laughs> she literally like intercepts with a better snack. <laughs> she has baskets. <laughs> I would love to show up just to be courted by all the homecoming queens. Like just bring free snacks to school. Thank you. All we've been through together 
or the number of times that I've saved your life. What do you want? To loan your computer with Cordelia's database. She's rather, she, Buffy is not holding back one bit. She is doing whatever it takes to win. I've always felt a special bond between you and me. Have you really, Buffy? You really are giving out money, huh? Is that any more tacky than your faux I'm shy but deep campaign posters? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to call it out, actually. Do you have parents? Yeah, two of them. Unlike some people. Jeez. You're sick. You know that? Okay, let's not say something we'll uh, regret later, okay? You crazy freak. Vapid uh, whore. Like that. Jeez. The worst thing that's ever happened. Ever. I know. I know. I mean, you guys gotta come clean now. I look at you now. It's like I'm seeing you for the first time. Xander. When you're falling to pieces, your mouth, it just... It's just the Spending time alone. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. This is just... What's this ride going to be like? Dear friends, P.S. The limo is not cheap. Work it out. <laughs> I feel like they're going to get ambushed and that's the only way they're going to work things out. I think with all these friends, like they need to be fighting for life or death to resolve their issues. Finally, we're here. No, you're not. This is a setup. They're going to be absent and they're both going to lose Homecoming Queen. I feel like that's a mistake. You know that seventeen now to run for your lives. Faith, Buffy, have a nice death. <laughs> His little title card, come on. What are you two so mopey about? <laughs> Wrote this song for me. Oh. We have to find Buffy. Something terrible is happening. Just kidding. I thought I could be a scare. <laughs> Giles. Little do you know. Blame that I'm not a slayer and they let me go. Come on, Cordelia. Holy, that was close. Nice. Could I just ask you an eensy favor? Could you just tell your friends that I'm not a slayer? Cordelia, I don't think it matters. I think they're gonna hunt you regardless. Doctor says that the itching and the swelling and the burning should clear up, but we gotta keep using the ointment. Hi. I mean, poor Scott. Did he deserve that? <laughs> I, I think I'll retreat to the library until the coronation. <laughs> we should be safe in here for a while. You need to find a weapon. Yeah, honestly, Cordelia, get something to defend yourself. I'm never going to know if it's real between me and Xander, if it's just some temporary insanity that made me think I loved him. Aww. And now I'm never going to get the chance to tell him. Uh. Then I'm going to take out the rest of these guys just in time for you to congratulate me on my sweeping victory as homecoming queen. You think if you get me mad enough, I won't be so scared. And hey, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's the way to get Cordelia to conquer her fear, get her upset. Just this and a telephone. A telephone. And you didn't think that'd be helpful? <laughs> Come on, Cordelia. Better for... Oh. <laughs> they don't look at your grades for voting for Homecoming Queen. Got a phone. If you get this message, Giles, get help and get out here. Hello? Yeah, these villains are a little bit more tech savvy than Spike and Drusilla, it seems like. Want me to cut that leg off? No, thanks. I think he meant that as a genuine favor. <laughs> He's like, do you need some help? I can help. Giles, it's me and Cordelia. We're in a cabin in Miller's Woods. We're in big trouble. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. All I wanted was to be homecoming queen. And that's all I wanted too, Cordelia. I don't even get why you care about homecoming when you're doing stuff like this. Because this is all I do. And it's hard work. It's dangerous. It's scary. It's not normal and fun like what she wants. Besides, I look cute in a tiara. Do you hear? <laughs> She's in. <laughs> Come on, Cordelia. Cordelia, the spatula. <laughs> yeah, with that type of accuracy, you might actually shoot Buffy. 
Run, run, run! Jeez, that might have ripped Cordelia apart. My wedding present for what happened to your poor brother. When's she coming? I feel like these two vampires are extremely incompetent. I'll take care of it. Who's showing up at their place? You. Excuse me. Anybody got a woman in here? Is that? F those are police. Are they working with the mayor or something? Buffy. There you go. Cordelia is learning her place in a little support position. With the spatula? That's incredible. You hear me? I hear you, you redneck moron. <laughs> Rip out my innards, play with my eyeballs, boil my brain and eat it for brunch. Buffy and I have taken out four of your cronies, not to mention your girlfriend. Wife! Whatever. <laughs> Point is, I haven't even broken a sweat. See, in the end, Buffy's just the runner-up. I'm the queen. <laughs> you get me mad? What do you think I'm gonna do to you? What a monologue. Later. Only Cordelia could trash talk a vampire into walking away. That's Slayer material right there. I not forget Homecoming Queen. I nominate her as a new Slayer. Jungle Bob said that the Germans were hooked into a computer system. Oh. I need some wet toilet paper. Yeah, that'll help. What is she going to use that for? <laughs> Buffy is lucky they missed. Targets together at 20 feet north and stationary. Final position is locked. Fire when ready. That's a cool shot along the barrel of the gun like that. Come on. Fire. Are they going to kill each other? What did the did that like throw off the signal somehow? I won. <laughs> you did not. Come on. You have to see the bodies. And even in this universe with coming back from the dead, maybe not. I don't know exactly how that worked, but it was smart. Mr. Trick. Please sit down. Was he gonna make a deal with him? You see, that's the kind of initiative I need on my team. What if I don't want to be a part of the team? Oh no. That won't be an issue. He's so confident. So you and I are going to get along very well. Moist towelette? What was there? What did he have? Does he have some type of thing that controls the vampires or scares them? Okay, this is the real stakes of the show. Who's going to win? <laughs> oh, God. Long story. Got hunted. Apparently not that long. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty short. Tell you one thing, though. I don't want to mess with Cordelia. <laughs> On with the no. That was a nervous laugh from Xander. <laughs> uh, the name of this year's homecoming queen. It's going to be neither of them, right? This whole who gets to be queen capade seems pretty damn important. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I believe we have a first for Sunnydale High. We have a tie. The winners are Holly Charleston and Michelle Blake. Yep, I mean, I'm surprised it was a tie with other people, but <laughs> I like how they're both like in shock and disgusted. <laughs> they're going to become like so tight after this episode. Oh, uh, I knew Cordelia wasn't going to win, but her campaign was still the best. All right, so that's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, season three, episode five. Uh, an another very strong episode. Uh, a, a lot of humorous elements blended together. I just, it was a lot of fun having so much of the focus of the episode be something as trivial as the homecoming queen. It's kind of a nice way to add some humor to the show, but it also does kind of tie into the, the more serious theme of Buffy feeling not not just feeling, but literally having been robbed of so many opportunities and experiences that a normal girl would be going through in high school and how she can look at Cordelia. Like, I, I like having those two characters spend a lot of time together because, I mean, I lo they're two of my favorites in the show, Cordelia as my favorite, um, but th they're characters who are very seemingly different, and I still think there's a lot of differences in their personalities, their mannerisms. You know, they are not... 
uh, people that I would say in many circumstances would necessarily be friends, but I do think that there is a, a, a side to them that can relate in a very, you know, strong way. And especially when, you know, Buffy talks about her life before she was a Slayer. I think that's where Buffy was really similar to Cordelia in maybe a more fundamental sense. Um, but I, I, I just, I, I just like how they show, like, Buffy and Cordelia are friends, but I think Buffy's line... Um, like we're almost friends and I think that's kind of true like with Cordelia like she I, I really like how the show brought her in as one of the core members of the group and there was that episode I think it was either in towards the end of season one or maybe early in season two where Buffy and Cordelia did spend some time together and Cordelia kind of opened up about the pressures and the loneliness of trying to be that popular kid you know and that was a nice little um a nice little glimpse at a deeper side of them for each other. But for normal episodes and normal dynamics, like there is a little bit of that distance there between Buffy and Cordelia. I just don't think that they mesh super well. They're much closer friends with the friends around, with other, you know, people around them in their own group, so to speak, as opposed to themselves. Um, but they, the something that they both have that I think is really interesting, and they do share this, is they have a real strength of character, a real courage and, you know, you, you see Buffy as someone who is just such a determined person, you know, like when she has to save the universe or get anything done, like she's just the type of person when she puts her mind to getting something done, she's going to work hard and not let anything stop her. And Cordelia, usually for much different things than what Buffy is prioritizing, but she has that same like killer instinct. And is it is just, it's so cool to see. And I love how invested they both got. And I love how even though they're friends, they're not, you know, it just feels like so more realistic to true friendships, at least in my experience, that you're competitive with your friends. You know, they're, you still want to win, and it's a friendly competition. You can learn to do that without it causing any tensions in the friendship. But it's not like we need to go, you know, 150% kumbaya and be like, no, I want you to win. I want you to win. It's like, come on, there's nothing wrong with wanting to win yourself. And having a friendship, you know, you don't let competition drive a wedge between you, but you that that can deepen the grooves and connections of friendship, having that friendly competition. So that it was just a cool thing to see. And I always like when shows take like kind of an odd couple and put them together, like force them to spend time together, because the way that those characters interact is is usually very interesting. And I thought that this episode definitely did that. Willow and Xander. Oh, my gosh. Ugh, I. I feel like the second I saw Willow in the background, you know, changing, like undressing and Xander was in the same room, I just little alarm bells went off in my head. And I was thinking like, no, 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 like that's not going to happen. Like I know it's a teenage, it's teenagers in a show, but they're not going to go down this direction. Right. And then there was kind of a nice cute moment where I was like, oh, maybe they've really matured in their relationship where the two of them are able to be close friends because they grew up together, but be happy for the other person, each of them being in different relationships with in different relationships with other people. But then, of course, uh, of course, uh, no, no, they, they dress up, they look nice, they force close proximity. I mean, teenagers, emotion, confusion, it's just... Oh, and I and I feel bad because especially that we saw with Cor I mean, Oz, I think, has demonstrated time and time again, like how genuinely he cares for Willow, you know, at, ever since that moment in the van where he told Willow that he didn't want to kiss her because he could tell that it wasn't Willow wasn't coming from the right place in that moment. I think it was an in innocence. Um, I, I've just always I mean, that's just what a clear demonstration of kind of the the depth of his feelings and the goodness of his character. But Cordelia, you know, when she was worried, you know, thinking that maybe they're going to die, one of the things on her mind, after Homecoming Queen, of course, but one of the things was about her relationship with Xander. And I just, I guess just, I've said this multiple times, but I'm just surprised at how much Cordelia, at least in my interpretation, genuinely cares about Xander in a, in a good, healthy way. Like, I, I think it's, it is much more, I, I think she's confused by it too. I mean, I'm a, still a bit confused from it as an audience member. It's, 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 there's, there are people like that. Like there are couples that you look at them and on the surface, you're like, how does that work? But, and a lot of times it's because the relationship doesn't actually work, but 
On Cordelia's side of this relationship, I actually think that it really does work. Like, I think she can be herself around him, and there's something appealing, and she genuinely, like, cares about Xander. Xander, on the other hand, I've never quite got that total sense, because it just seems like time and time again, his attention seems to stray and go back and forth. I mean, even with Faith showing up quickly, you know, two episodes ago, it seemed like just... Just like that, Xander is, you know, paying attention to her and kind of not being as respectful or considerate of Cordelia as I would expect. And then, of course, we kind of culminate with this whole thing. And it's it's tough because I think Willow's feelings come from a real you know, She has had a crush on Xander for so, so long. Xander, it's a little bit more confusing to me. It feels much more. I mean, both of them feels like very teenager to me, but. But, but I feel bad. I really feel bad for Oz and Cordelia. And I'm hoping that Xander and Willow don't get caught. I'm hoping they don't get found out and that they come clean, you know, and admit to their partners, their respective partners, what, what happened. And they can explain the circumstances, say, look, it was stupid. We were, you know, reminiscing about the past, getting all dressed up. It was emotional and it just happened and we regretted it immediately. But that honesty is so important, and I just hope they do that sooner rather than later, and they don't drag this out, because the dishonesty about it, I think, is more grievous than the kiss, if that makes sense. And I could see that, that uh, you know, a prolonged dishonesty and deception could really drive a wedge, and maybe even, you know, lead to the breakup with Xander and Cordelia, which I still feel like is inevitable one of these days, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I still want to see more Faith. I mean, kind of as the new character brought in, I'm very curious. I really want to get to know her more and spend a little bit more time, but I'm sure they will get there eventually if she doesn't get killed off, but we'll see. Um, and then the mayor, of course, seeing the mayor is exciting because I think he's going to be a recurring evil character, but I just think he's probably going to be evil through a lens that we haven't quite explored in this show. And I think it, just something about the mayor strikes me as a villain who, you know, Buffy can't walk up to him and stake him in the heart. It's not as simple as that. And I'm just very intrigued with how Buffy and company are going to take on villains who maybe are a little bit... Um, more clever, a little bit trickier, play things from a political way and use their leverage in Sunnydale, their power, or even just the fact that they're adults and Buffy can't come right out and tell the whole public that she's a slayer, you know, kind of leverage Buffy's need for secrecy against her. I just, it could be very interesting. And I also wonder like why he's so comfortable and confident with the vampires. Like what does he have? What does he have some type of supernatural icon or weapon that is able to control the creatures in Sunnydale? Does he is does he have like just is he just a really good businessman? He's gonna be able to work out a relationship. I feel like he has something. It's it feels like he has some type of powerful thing we just haven't seen yet. But I, I really am excited to see all these things. I feel like this whole season so far has been developing like several storylines, several threads. It really feels like we're setting up a lot of pieces that will have a big pay off and will carry over more um and then just quickly before wrapping up i feel i feel terrible for angel am i the only one i mean i i i fully understand what buffy kind of said to him how she wants to move on she needs to have a normal life like i i understand that perspective but for him just to be chained up, confused, lost, in pain, to have suffered for how many hundreds of years, and then, uh, I don't know, it, it, it reminds, I just recently reacted to Cast Away with Tom Hanks, where of course, um, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, if you haven't seen the movie, it's a great movie, I recommend it, so go watch it before you hear this quick comment, but, um, so I'm going to spoil Cast Away, just as a warning. Stop watching this video if you haven't seen Cast Away. But Cast Away was so good because at the end of the movie, Tom Hanks comes back and it was so heartbreaking because he was in love, you know, engaged to this woman who thought he had died. And it's devastating that they can't reunite and be together again. I feel like Angel coming back from hell, though it's it's like that times a thousand like can like just put yourself in angel's shoes for a second like you wake up from a coma 
the, the love of your life stabs you in the heart with a sword. You don't know why. And then you spend maybe, let's just go easy, 50 years in hell, like 50 years. Like I felt bad for Giles in the season two finale when he was being tortured for like 20 minutes. I was like, come on, hurry up and save him. He's in horrible pain, like 50 years. I just, I think it's difficult to kind of wrap your mind around how, how, hard and horrible that is but on top of that to escape that prison hell itself and to come back and then that to be confused not have full control over yourself or full consciousness and then to just be chained up all by yourself and have your ex-girlfriend who stabbed you you still don't know why you know just kind of be like, sorry, I've got to move on. That's that's devastating. So I feel bad for Angel. I don't I don't know if there's any way that he can have a happy life, that poor dude, but we will see. Uh, thank you. I, I've been loving this season so far. Another really, really strong episode. Thank you to everyone for watching along. Like I mentioned, you want to see next week's reaction? It's up on Patreon right now for early access. I'm very excited to check that out. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero.